Hi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank Vietnamese Les Battery Society that invited me to give a talk today. Let me briefly introduce to myself. My name is Pailin Latunatwaku. I'm a pulmonologist and ILD specialist from Thailand. Today, I will talk to you all about smoking-related interstitial lung disease. I have nothing to disclose. My presentation will cover three common smoking-related ILD, RBILD, DIP, and the newcomer, which is called SLIF. I will dig deeper into each topic respectively. Let me begin with the lung anatomy. This is the lung, and this is the secondary pulmonary lobe. To zoom in, this is the secondary pulmonary lobe. This is the bronchial, and this is the pulmonary artery. The bronchial and pulmonary artery uh, is in the middle of the secondary lobe. The border of the secondary lobe is pulmonary vein and lymphatic vessel. When the disease is associated with inhalation injury, like cigarette smoke or like a dust inhalation, the culprit lesion usually found at terminal bronchial. You can see the centric lobular pattern on the HRCT if the lesion is located in terminal bronchial. To zoom in more into the alveoli, here. Here is the sketch picture. This is the airway, less battery, bronchial, and alveolar duct, and this is the alveolar sex. Comparing to the real histopathology, this is the respiratory bronchial and this is the alveolar septum or interstitium and the spade here is the alveoli. To see me more, these are three alveoli and the tissue allowed here is the alveolar septum or we call it interstitium. Almost all smokers have an accumulation of smoker macrophage, which is characterized by the presence of cytoplasmic vacuole containing fine golden brown red bulb hemosiderin pigment. The smoker macrophage may persist in the lung for decades, even after you stop smoking. To begin with the RB and RBLD. If an accumulation of alveolar macrophage occupy within the respiratory bronchial and the peribronchiolar area, we call this disease respiratory bronchiolitis or RB. If the accumulation of smoker macrophage spread more diffusely into the interstitium or alveolar septum, we call this disease RBILD or respiratory bronchiolitis interstitial lung disease. The respiratory bronchiolitis RB is an inflammatory disease of the small airway caused by cigarette smoke. RB is found incidentally in smoker lung autopsy. RB usually occurs without symptoms. Subclinical radiological chain can be found in up to one-fifth of the smoker. For RBLD, the accumulation of smoker macrophage extended to alveolar septum or interstitium. Patient can have more symptoms. Some experts claim that RBLD probably represent a subset of individual with a more severe stage in the spectrum of RB, like a more disease extension. Most pathologists believe that sometimes these two persons, RB and RBLD, is difficult to distinguish. Today, we will combine these two together. RBLD usually occur in 
forward of fifth decade of life. There is slightly male predominance. RBLD can occur in either colon or former smoker. Patients usually heavy smoke as like more than 30 pack years. The symptoms are generally mild. Pulmonary function tests commonly show mixed obstruction and restriction because it involves both airway and interstitial. The DLCO is usually reduced. Symptoms are non-specific. Most presently, most presentation with shortness of breath or deep sneer. Cough and wheezing is found about 60 to 70 percent of the patient. On physical examination, cackle is usually detected. Coming of finger is not very common in RBILD. The field file reticular and reticulonodular opacity is usually found in RBILD. The gut glass appearance occasionally seen. The lung volume is usually preserved. The bronchial wall thickening can be noticed. However, one third of the patient had normal chest x ray. On HRCT, the most common pattern is poorly defined synthetic lobular gut glass nodule. As I previously mentioned, the disease that, that associated with inhalation, like smoking, dilation in HRCT is confined in centric lobular area. Here is the centric lobular nodule. Gout glass opacity can be found. Lesion is slightly upper zone pit direction. Bronchial wall thickening can be detected. Honeycombing and traction bronchiectasis should not be found. However, reticulation can be seen. Concomitant emphysema and hypoattenuated air trapping can be observed. The field centric lobular gout gas nodule can be also seen in subacute HP, hypersensitivity pneumonitis. The doctor should seek for exposure history. However, the HP Larry occur in colon or listen smoker. Smoking cessation is strongly advised for every patient with RBLD. Although the data about improvement following smoke cessation are uh, controversy, we should not disregard smoking cessation. We should advise every patient to stop smoking. If the patient do not improve with stop smoking alone, the next step is glucocorticoid and immunosuppressive. Lung transplantation is very needed. Other support treat treatment is also important. Doctors should pay attention on oxygen support, pulmonary rehabilitation, vaccination, and prescribe the bronchodilator if patient has concomitant emphysema or CPD. Lung cancer screening should be performed because this patient is heavy smoke. The prognosis of RBLD is very good. 10 years survival is allowed 80%. The next topic is about discriminative interstitial pneumonia or DIP. DAP cause from accumulation of smoker microfish within the alveoli. As you can see here, the alveolar space was substituted by the pigmented smoker microfish. Here is the smoker microfish in the alveoli. The alveolar's architecture is generally well preserved. There might be some chronic inflammatory cell infiltration in the interstitium or alveolar septum here. But the degree of involvement is much less extensive compared to the NSIP. 
even though cigarette smoke usually plays a major role of causing DIP, up to 90% of the VIP case. There are several other etiologies that cause DIP, such as dust inhalation, infection, medication, systemic disease, like Gaucho disease. And it has been reported that can be found after lung transplantation. DIP usually found in the four to six decades of life. They are found more in men than women, like a 2 to 1 ratio. Most common symptoms are cough and dyspnea. Interestingly, digital cupping frequently found up to 50% of the patients. Hypoxemia is also observed in some patients. Primary function tests commonly show less tips defect unlike the RBLD, which is mixed obstruction and restriction. DLCO is usually reduced. Chest X-ray finding in DIP may be normal. If there are some, there is usually non-specific lesions. Commonly pictured are bilateral alveolar opacification, gout gas appearance, is usually located in lower lung and peripheral is unlike RBLD, which is usually upper lobe predominant. In HRCT, DAP usually present with diffuse gout grass here. The lesion usually bilateral and asymmetrical. is usually located mid to lower lung so The mycosis can also be seen. Fine reticulation and thickening of interlobular septum can be detected, but not very common. Honeycombing should not be found. Treatment of GIP is quite similar to RBILD. The outcome of smoking cessation is varies, could be improved, stable, deteriorate or lead up later in life. Be careful. If smoking is not the cause, the culprit exposure should be removed, such as discontinued medication, treating the infection, avoiding the dust exposure, etc. Next topic, I will talk about smoking-related interstitial fibrosis, or SLIF. SLIF is firstly defined from incidental fighting from smoker lung tissue that cut for remove out for other reasons like a cancer surgery. It's usually found in fifth to seventh decade of life. There is no gender difference. Patients usually are symptomatic. However, in symptomatic patients, the most common presentation are cough and dyspnea. Pulmonary function tests commonly show obstruction. The RBLD is mixed obstruction and restriction. DIP is restriction. SLIF is obstruction. DLCO is usually reduced. Biopsy is rarely undertaken in patients with SLIF because symptoms are usually mild. And overshadowed by other problems such as lung cancer. On lung biopsy, slip is characterized by distinct type of hyaluronic interstitial fibrosis. It's associated with emphysema, here is emphysema, and respiratory bronchiolitis. This is a magnification illustration. So here is the hyaluronic interstitial fibrosis deposition in the alveolar septum or in the interstitia. The effect of alveolar septum are thickening by deposition of the hyaluronic collagen. Sometimes it had a hyperplastic smooth muscle bundle.
This patient had both sleep and DAP. In this sample, you see that in the other area, there was a smoker microfish. Here is the smoker pigmented microfish in the alveolar. This is the DIP pattern. Moreover, there is a hyalinized deposition in the alveolar septum, and this is a smooth muscle bundle. It is important to differentiate sleep with UIP pattern. In the HRCT, emphysema in sleep may look like honeycombing from UIP. However, from histopathology, the honeycombing is an enlarged air space, usually lie by bronchiolar epithelium. Here is a zoom in of bronchiolar epithelium lining. Unlike the emphysema in sleep, the s bed lesion is not lining with bronchiolar tight epithelium. Another condition that should be distinguished from sleep is fibrotic NSIP. In fibrotic NSIP, the alveolar septum or indecision is usually loose and infiltrate with lymphoplasmacytic cells like an inflammatory cell and sometimes fibrosis. Why in sleep? The alveolar septum or interstitia is infiltrated by the hyalinized fibrosis. It's a eosinophilic low pro collagen deposition. The predominant location is also different. Fibrotic NSIP is usually diffuse, whereas leaf is usually subpural and centric lobular predominance. This is the summary table of histologic feature found in sleep, UAP, and fibrotic NSIP. This is a HRCT finding in sleep. Cloud glass appearance and emphysema is commonly seen. Here is the emphysema, and here is a small emphysema, and this is a cloud glass. Cow glass. This is another HRCT case of sleep. There were upper lobe and peripheral predominance. Is the patchy or paraceptal and centric lobular emphysema with reticulation and cow glass appearance. There was very few studies on sleep. Here is a study about sleep and respiratory bronchiolitis from lung resection. This size is from lung cancer tissue source, and this site is from benign tissue source. As you can see here, from lung cancer tissue source, sleep is usually seen with respiratory bronchiolitis. Among patients who found sleep in lung tissue, patients who had concomitant interstitial lung abnormality seemed to be younger than patients who had no interstitial lung abnormalities. And patients who had concomitant interstitial lung abnormality were Cullen smoker. Here, all patient has smoker like a Cullen smoker. More study are needed to understand more about sleep. About the treatment, very few study mention about sleep treatment. But I think the treatment is quite similar to the RBLD and GIP. However. Bronchodilator are more pronounced because 
emphysema is a prominent feature in sleep. Don't forget to prescribe bronchodilator. Pulmonary hypertension is commonly found. It might be related to emphysema. Because the lesion of sleep is supra predominant, it can be larger and causing pneumothorax. So we have to observe if patient had chest pain and chronic breath suddenly. To sum up, there are several diffuse parenchymal and lung disease and industrial lung disease that have been linked to smoking. Today, I only have time to talk only three diseases. HRCT pattern and histopathological pattern are varying in each disease. If you understand the pathological, you will understand the HRCT. Stop smoking is the main initial treatment. If the disease is refractory, steroid and immunosuppressive might be applied. Don't forget to give a supportive treatment like a bronchodilator, oxygenation, vaccination, and pulmonary rehabilitation. So I will finish my presentation here. And thank you for your attention. And thank you again for inviting me to give this talk to you all. Bye.